Hello, welcome to Earth Engine Tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to visualize uh, Lensset 9 data and also how to compare Lensset 8 and uh, Lensset 9 uh, imagery. So first, let's go to uh, download the notebook example. So uh, gmap.org and then on the left side, notebooks. Uh, scroll down all the way to uh, 99 and then upper right corner here, uh, click to download this uh, notebook to your computer. And then you can uh, open in the conduct prompt or your uh, terminal and then uh, activate the conduct environment. And then type Jupyter Lab, uh, hit enter. And then you should see the Jupyter Notebook uh, open in your browser. Uh, on the left side, double click the Notebook 99. And so this is the Notebook example we're going to go through. Uh, as you can see, um, it's uh, this uh, Notebook has two major sections. The first one, I'm going to show you how to visualize Lenset 9 imagery with different spectral bands and the second section is to compare Lenset 8 and 9 uh, imagery okay so first uh, let's import the library oh by the way so uh, a brief introduction to Lenset 9 it was launched on September 27 uh, 20, uh, 2021 um, and then USGS uh, has been providing data uh, since February 10 2022 so it was roughly uh, last week only a couple of days ago and today um, I just uh, noticed that uh, Google Earth Engine uh, started uh, ingesting the Lancet 9 data into the Earth Engine data catalog but right now it's not listed um, publicly on the Earth Engine data set web page so you need to uh, directly use the Earth Engine image collection ID here Lancet 9 uh, uh, Lancet, Lancet 9 and then collection 2 tier 1 um and then uh, level two so in order to visualize the data uh, we are going to use uh, gmap so first let's import uh, earth engine and leaf map and next we're going to create an interactive map and after that um, we can get access to the earth and uh, the lancet 9 image collection so using the id and then uh, assign this one to available uh, after that, we're going to print out how many images are uh, in the Earth Engine data catalog. So if you shift enter, uh, it's going to show you, okay, right now it's um, 15,564 images. So it's, it's basically the ingestion uh, process is still ongoing. This morning when I, when I checked it, it was only like uh, 1,700. So right now it's uh, 15,000, uh, more than 50,000. So it's still growing and hopefully uh, it will catch up. Uh, and then ingest all the images into uh, the data catalog all right so once we have the all the images uh, we can create a median composite so basically it's going to take a median uh, value of all the pixels at every location and let's take a look so this would be the median and then since uh, earth engine uh, lens and night data are not stored in the original data so there's some uh, scale uh, factor you need to apply so you can click the link to go to the earth engine uh, web page so this is for the lens 8 uh, but it's very similar for lens 9 because uh, uh, earth engine has not officially added the data so it won't see the page but i hope in the future it definitely will be but uh, the scale factor um, are the same for both lens 8 and 9 so you can see this is the scale factor and this is the offset so uh, basically the reflectance are going to be in a uh, floating point so uh, ranging from zero all the way to one and in this case here uh, you use integer to uh, store the data because you say you can save some storage so you, but when you're trying to use the data you need to convert the data back to the original uh, surface reflectance so uh, this is the scale uh, factor and this is the offset so let's come back to this function here this so this function essentially apply the scale factor and so it's going to select all the surface reflectance uh, band um, and then it's going to multiply by the scale factor and then add the offset so this is the uh, optical band it's going also going to apply to the uh, thermal band so the thermal bands the scale factor are different so if you see uh, uh, stb10 so this would be the uh, the thermal band and so you have a scale factor you also have on offset so and right so this is the scale vector and this one once you uh, apply then you are going to add the band back to the original image and it's going to override so as you can see this function is basically applying the scale factor and then 
once you uh, apply it's going to uh, the image is going to be uh, scaled back to the reflectance uh, in floating point once we have this one uh, we can visualize the data so in this case we're going to visualize in two uh, different combinations the first one is using uh, the nature uh, the uh, natural color and the second one is using the uh, near infrared so the first color uh, the color infrared right so but the minimum uh, zero and the maximum so 30 percent uh, reflectance and let's take a look so once we uh, specify the visualization parameters then we can add the data layers right so the data set is the same but uh, we are selecting different spectral bands to visualize and the third parameter is just the label uh, showing uh, on the layer uh, control so let's take a look once you uh, shift enter you should be able to uh, see the imagery because right now uh, google engine has not finished all the uh, 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 ingestion process yet but so you will see it's no global coverage but it's quite uh, right now for example in the US you already see pretty much uh, yeah it's already have full coverage for the U pretty much all uh, full coverage for the for the US and so we have two data layers color infrared and also the true color if you want you can go to the um, layers control and then from here you can turn the layer on and off right so true color uh, all natural color and also color infrared uh, different spectral band you can zoom you can change the opacity right move in and out right you can zoom in to see a little bit more uh, of course you're going to see a lot of cloud because right now it has been operating for just a couple months so uh, we don't have for every location you don't have multiple coverage uh, every day so the revisiting frequency is uh, 16 days right so basically every location you have uh, every 16 days it has um one of one observation and it has only been uh, operating uh, capturing the data since i think uh, one or two months ago um and so this is the first uh some of the first uh, uh, data sets so you only have like one or maybe a couple observations and uh the cloud issue is not going to be resolved using a median uh, filter uh, because you don't have enough uh, images okay so this for uh, loading the images and so next i'm going to show you a couple more combinations um, because we only use two and the so lenset 8 has oh uh, let me put it back okay so lenset 8 has a, uh, some of the common combined uh, by bank combinations so you can go to the link and here shows you some right we uh, use the natural color we also uh, use the color infrared and i'm going to add two more a uh, short wave infrared and also agriculture and it's going to depend on the the features you're looking at it's going to highlight uh different features all right so uh pretty much uh, very similar to what we did earlier but in this case we're going to put all the visualization parameters within a list and also we're going to specify the level so let me execute this one first and then let's see the result first and then we can explain what this is doing right so here uh, right now we create a link maps so basically you have the same uh, two rows and two columns so if you see here you can create as many rows as many columns once um, but in this case we use two by two and the height basically 400 pixels so the height from here to here uh, it's 400 pixel and also you can specify the center right uh, 40 degree latitude and negative 100 degree uh, longitude so this is center around the US uh, zoom level 4 and the data set we're going to use the same one that we used earlier so the data set is the one after we apply uh, the scale factor so it's coming from here and then we're going to specify the visualization parameters so this is the list so two by two uh, basically we have four uh, um, combinations and we're going to need four uh, sets of uh, visualization parameters so the first one second one third and number four also the label so uh, corresponding to the visualization parameter, uh, parameters 432 uh, as natural color 543 color infrared and short wave infrared and also agriculture so it's coming from here right so you can see what kind of bank combination and the nice thing about the link maps is that you can when you move in uh, move one image it's going to move the other one so they are all linked together and this gives you a quick way to um, visualize data using different bank combination so you can 
maybe try using this one to figure out some of the uh, base combination to highlight uh, the features for your um, for the things you're trying to detect okay or trying to analyze so this is using uh, 432 543 764 and 652 and you can see here uh, this looks like a little bit uh, too bright uh, you can control if you want you can control this one so you can control for example um, the maximum so if you increase the maximum uh, it will definitely reduce the brightness uh, on some of the images because uh, in this case some of those might have higher reflectance and um, so if we set the lower maximum uh, you want to uh, any values um, greater than the maximum value you're going to show as a uh, bright color okay so this is how you can visualize laser 9 data using different band combinations uh, with the uh, link maps so the next uh, example i want to show you how to visualize uh, or compare lens 9 data and uh, lens 8 data we are going to use these two sample images uh, so lens 8 uh, section 2 and here one so this is um, the lens 8 data and the lens 9 um, well, i use some of the sample id but you are welcome to filter the data using your region of uh, interest and then you can get for example uh, uh, the base how free imagery uh, for your uh, area and then grab the imagery so we are just going to use these two sample imagery and similarly we're going to apply the scale factors right similar to what we did earlier right and after we apply the factors then uh, these two images now uh, represent the surface reflectance once we have the original data uh, we're going to get the data layer because uh, you cannot directly add uh, earth ending data to the map yeah you need to get so-called tile layer so basically uh, just like you are visualizing google map right uh, you are not visualizing the original data you're just visualizing when the data is sent back to the uh, display on your browser so we're going to uh, convert the earth ending data layer uh, earth ending data to a tile layer so that we can visualize them on the map right so e tile layer and the data set we're going to visualize what kind of a uh, um, visualization parameters we want to use so in this case we're going to use a uh, natural color and this is the label right so look and after that what you need is use the uh, split function right the split function left layer and the right layer right and similarly zoom in right so this is where you can compare the differences uh, so the left side uh, right now this one is on the right side it's plain set 9 this one will be lens at eight right they are not exactly the uh the pass and road are not exactly the same but you can compare the overlap right so you can zoom in a little bit to compare the differences between lens at eight and nine see the quality uh, are they just very similar or is lens at nine uh, much better so you can soon really see in here yeah visually they look quite similar um, but there might be some features that uh, you can better detect using uh, lens at 9 uh, compared to lens at 8 right uh, right now is 9 left side here uh, is 8 <coughs> uh, clearly you can see some of the uh, ships on the, um, on the ocean uh, on the lens at 8 here you looks like the, it's not as good as lens at 9 right of course you can see on the right here there are lots of uh, ships uh, on the ocean on the lens at eight uh, it might not be just it might just be the time or it might be that lens at eight is uh, in in terms of the quality is not as good uh, as lens at nine yeah just some speculation you are of course you are welcome to um do some uh, quantitative analysis of the two data sets see uh, if lens at nine is truly uh, better than lens at eight looks like lens set 9 you have um precision so you basically you see more uh, detailed differences uh, within uh, the pixels and lens set. but this is um might not be a fair comparison because uh, we might be looking at different seasons so if you want to look in more detail you can find out for example uh the date and time uh, of the imagery and see whether they or not they are truly uh different right so you can see from the ID here. Uh, the lens at 8 was uh, acquired in April 2nd, and the one on the right was December 31st, so the last day of last year. 
uh, December. But this one, this area is in um, Florida. You can see the coastal area and see all the uh, wetlands. Yeah, pretty nice. It looks at least visually they look quite similar, and it's pretty stunning. Uh, this image quality is quite uh, quite good. All right. So if you don't need that anymore, uh, low right corner here, you can click the close button to close the map. So it's going to return to the uh, base map. Okay, so that's all for this uh, video. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.